Salesforce Efficiency Analysis Introduction. Let's have a look at uh, the Salesforce Efficiency in uh, Poland of our cosmetic producer. So he has uh, 20 sales reps in Poland. So one of the country he is present. Then those sales reps visit all customers in his region. By customers here, we don't mean actually the end customers being the consumers of those cosmetics, but we rather have in mind the retailers. So the, your sales force in this case is visiting retailers and convincing them to buy your own products. And then we want obviously to improve uh, the efficiency. By this, we mean either going down with costs or increasing the gross margin somehow and through this increasing the net margin. So at the end, the goal is to increase the net margin. Before we go to Excel, let's have a look at uh, some of the things you should know or you should consider before actually estimating the efficiency and finding optimal solution. So first of all, you have to know what is the full cost per one sales rep. So calculate not only the salary, but additional costs like cars and software he is using. You also should know what is the value that a specific type of customer creates to know how much we are gaining by visiting him. This will tell you in turn whether it's actually worth at all to visit a customer or what should be the frequency of visits. Then you can, on the basis of this, wonder or look for ways to improve the efficiency of sales reps. So this is a basis for you to generate ways you can later on implement. It's also worth looking at what kind of things you can standardize or automate. So one of the source of efficiency improvement is quite often a standardization. So having one standard for every sales rep, every customer or automating it. So making actually the, the person not necessary in the, the whole process. You should also wonder what kind of uh, things you can outsource to a cheaper provider. So it might be a person supporting the sales rep or it might be uh, basically an outside company providing the service. And in this way, you don't have to build this into the, the visits the sales rep is doing to the customers. Now let's have a look how the solution could look like. Salesforce efficiency analysis solution. As a reminder, we are working for a cosmetics producer that has 20 sales reps in Poland and he wants to improve the efficiency of those sales reps. Let's go to Excel and see how we can do it. Please open file attached to the lecture, which is called Salesforce Efficiency version two. If you go to master, you will find uh, a table of contents. So all the analysis we have done here, the solution to this case will be a little bit longer. So I'll divide it into steps and every step will be a separate movie. So the first step is actually to calculate the cost of sales representative. So let's go to the first sheet. You will see here that we have calculated the current sales representative monthly cost that consists of a specific elements. So we have the salary cost, which is 5k per month. Then we have added the car costs, software and hardware costs and other costs. Let's have a closer look how we generate those numbers. So salary is basically the fixed monthly salary in row seven. And then in row eight, you have the bonus calculated, which is calculated as a percentage of the salary. So in this case, we have 25% of the base salary. Then car costs. Let's have a look how this is being generated. So we have a leasing of the car. So how much we pay to the leasing company. And then we have fuel per month costs, which is calculated as a number of kilometers per month that we will cover. And on top of that, we have fuel per one liter. What is the usage as well as the cost of the fuel. And then the last element is software and hardware. So here we have assumed some numbers for phone and CRM. For phone is smaller, so it's actually rounded to zero, zero. And then CRM is 600 users dollars per month. And other costs are just assumed to be 1000. So as you can see currently, one sales rep costs us 7.7. .7. And this consists of 5K salary costs, then 1K car costs, and then $600 software and hardware, and other costs being 1,000. Let's move on and see how we can analyze the current uh, usage of the time of this sales rep, which costs us 7.7 .7 per month. The second step is to analyze the current time usage for the current setup. So let's go to the second sheet. And you will see here the detailed analysis. We start by calculating the time spent per one customer. So how much uh, one customer takes of our time. 
As you will notice, a separate column is a separate type of a customer. So in J, we've got customer type A, then K is customer type B, and L is the customer type C. So time spent per one customer is, for example, for customer J, uh, 9 hours, for customer B, 11, and the customer C, 13 hours. What this is generated from, so we have to visit per month. So we visit every customer with the same frequency, so four times per month. It doesn't matter really with A, B or C. But what really differs is the average time per customer. So as you can see, A, it's five hours, then for B, it's seven hours, and then for C, it's nine hours. The average time per customer is just a sum of all the involvement we've got with them. So we have to go to them. So there is a travel time. Then we also have a visit, as, and as you can see for the C, we have four hours, where for the A, we have two hours. And then we have additional time for additional activities like uh, emails, and also for the C, it is the longest time. So this gives us some estimation how much the customer involvement requires depending on his type. Then, as we said, we have to somehow value the, the customer type. So we uh, calculate the gross margin per one customer. And as you can see for the customer type A, it's 20,000 US dollars. For customer B, it is five. And for customer C, it's 1,000. This is generated using two parameters. So one average sales per customer, and this is the highest for A, and also the margin in a percentage. And this is actually highest for customer type C. So this is here 30%. We get those two things together. So uh, the time involvement recalculated using numbers to calculate the net margin per one customer. So from previous calculation in uh, row number 19, we've got the gross margin per one customer. So it is 20,000 for customer A and uh, 5,000 for customer B and $900 for customer type C. And we've got the cost per one customer. As you can see, the highest is for customer C. And therefore, the net margin per one customer is very low for customer C. The cost per one customer of sales rep is calculated as a time spent from previous calculation per customer. So this is actually getting the data from row number five. And then with cost per one hour of sales in calculated in row 22, which is using the data calculated in a unit costs. So we know that it's roughly 8,000 per month and number of hours we have so in row number 24. So out of this, we get that uh, one hour costs us $45. Another way to look at uh, the efficiency per customer is to calculate something which is called net margin per hour of engagement. So here we have the cost per one hour of sales rep from previous calculation. And then we calculate the gross margin per hour of involvement. So how much one hour of involvement of the sales rep actually brings us in terms of the gross margin. And this is calculated by simply dividing the gross margin per one customer calculated previously and time spent per one hour. So in this way for the customer type A, which is here, we got the $2,222 per one hour. For customer B, it's 455 and 69 for customer type C. So we can see that's why, again, the net margin look so different for different type of customers. Last but not least, we look also at total involvement of the sales rep. So from previous assumption and calculations, we know how much time the sales rep spends per one customer from a specific type. So nine for customer type A, and for example, 13 for customer type C. We also have to put the number of customers, which is in row 35. So we have three customers of uh, type A per one sales rep, five of type B, and nine per type C. We multiply it in uh, row 33, you get the total time involvement per customers. And surprisingly, we've got only 27 hours per customer type A, Whereas for the least profitable customer, we have 117 hours total involvement. We also see that he's also doing some overtime. So he's working on average 199 hours. So we would be here very surprised to see that uh, he's spending actually most of this time on the least profitable type of customers. And not, last but not least, we have calculated the total net margin per sales rep. So here we have the net margin per customer from previous calculation in all 38 and the number of customers from assumption above. In this way, we can see that he's generating 84,000 net margin per month. 
most of this is actually coming from type A customers, which is the least involvement. And then uh, 23 is so roughly 20 something percent is getting from type B. C, which he spends most of his time is actually bringing close to nothing in terms of net margin. So this shows you that there is uh, some potential for improvements and we're going to see in the next lecture how to estimate it and uh, what will be the impact on profits. Now let's have a look how we can improve the efficiency of Salesforce and what will, could be the impact on net margin. So we're uh, going to do two attempts to improve it. So in the first one, we're just going to be looking for the margin maximization. So putting more efforts towards activities which brings more margin. So in our case, uh, switching some attention from customer C to customer A, but there will be no outsourcing and no reduction of the people. And in the second attempt, we're gonna be also adding some outsourcing to the mix of our Salesforce in order to see how this can move the net margin, the total net margin. As in the previous example, we're going to be using first uh, analysis per one sales rep. And at the very end, we're going to add it up and show you together how this presents itself. So let's go to the analysis of time usage for margin maximization. So the third sheet. And here you will see two things. So first of all, when we look at the time spent per customer, we are roughly spending the same uh, amount of uh, time per type of customer. And this is due to the fact that we have reduced the visits per month done. As you can see, we instead of having four visits per each and every customer, we visit just A four times, then B we visit three times, and then C being the least important and uh, least profitable, we just uh, visit him twice a week. This gives us also Apart from that, we did some improvements on average time per customer. So as you will see, it went down. So for customer A, we had uh, five hours in the previous setup. Here we have uh, five hours as well. For customer B, it's six and it was seven. And then for customer C, we currently have nine and we are going down to seven hours. And this allows us basically to have more time for customer A. So as you can see, we have increased the number of customers. So B and C stays the same, but uh, actually we increase the number of customers. A, in the, after the improvements, we will have five customers. And in the previous example with the current setup, we had uh, only three. So we added two customers of type A. And what does it give us? It gives us huge increase in the net margin. So now it's 126,000 per month, and it used to be 84,000 per month per sales rep. So as you can see, we have increased by 50% the net margin only by switching some of our attention from customer type C, which are the least profitable to more profitable customer A. And this was solely driven by the fact that we decreased the number of uh, visits per customer and decreased the, the time spent per customer B and C. So those small improvements help us to get 50% increase of the net margin. Let's see what we can do with the outsourcing.